looking outward, I saw an area which had become hugely important in all of the four Anglo-Commonwealth countries that I studied. The courts are pressed on all sides by some very, very difficult issues. The legality of the decision to go to war, individual rights in relation to external actions of agents of the state uh, outside the territory, and also the whole question of the role of parliament in treaty making. So these are some of the most fundamental constitutional issues of our age. And yet there hadn't been a book on foreign relations law in the Anglo-Commonwealth for 30 years. So there was plainly an important job of work to be done here. I had the feeling, which has been confirmed by my research, that we were still ruled in some way by the doctrines of the past, so that even though they'd lost a lot of their explanatory power and been hollowed out in practice, we didn't have an analytical structure that could replace them. And that's what I set out to do. At first sight, you would think there would be substantial similarities. After all, we share a basic common law legal system. Many of the formative thinkers in the field, John Locke and Blackstone, for example, uh, are, are names that are widely relied upon here in the United States as well as uh, in the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth. And yet, after all, the United States had a constitutional moment in the 18th century, and a big part of that constitutional moment was thinking about who was going to hold the foreign relations power and how it would be exercised. In the Commonwealth, we never had such a moment. We never had the opportunity to reconsider from fundamentals how foreign relations issues were to be considered. And yet, in a funny kind of way, that US preoccupation with trying to encapsulate foreign affairs within a constitution has created a system today where, at least in my perception, a, a lot of US foreign relations law is concerned with an attempt to project outwards onto the world uh, a set of constitutional norms developed domestically. And I wanted to present a vision of foreign relations law derived from four countries which are very deeply invested in the multilateral system, which could show how it could be used as a bridge between international law and the national legal system in a way that gave international law the rightful full play that it deserves to have in resolving these issues. We can take two cases which became, came before uh, the UK Supreme Court in the space of three years to do with the duties of the British government to protect uh, its own soldiers uh, serving in the field in southern uh, Iraq, in Basra. In the first case, the court said that a, a private who had collapsed on the streets of Basra suffering from hypothermia did not get human rights protection out there. Uh, but did only when uh, he returned to base where he very unfortunately died. That, in my submission, uh, was an untenable distinction and three years later, uh, encouraged uh, by the uh, European Court of Human Rights, the Supreme Court reconsidered its, its doctrine uh, and held that because soldiers in the British Army are completely under the control of the state, that's what it is to be a soldier, they were also entitled to the protections of uh, the state uh, when they were serving abroad. A lot of people say that foreign relations law is inherently something which can only be grounded within a particular constitutional structure of a particular state. But I've taken the decision in this book that I wanted to look across four independent countries, Australia, Canada, New Zealand and the United Kingdom, and to try to look in a comparative way at their uh, solutions on foreign relations issues. What I found when I did the research was that in fact the um, doctrines and the approaches that we have in common far outweigh the differences. Why is that? To some extent it's the shared uh, common law legal tradition and parliamentary tradition and that's a tradition which has been strongly nurtured through an ongoing judicial dialogue, a dialogue between parliaments also and law reform agencies, so that in many ways the law legal developments in this area have been ones uh, that, although they haven't followed precisely in tandem, nevertheless uh, what we have in common is still far greater than that which divides us. Mm -hmm.